Wait. What? <laughs> I need to get some new pants or put a little strap thing on that. I wore it out. <laughs> I still don't understand why beekeepers or beekeeping companies make white suits. It's like, it's got some character, but. <laughs> I think it has something to do with the fact that bees are attracted to every color. Eh. And black they hate, I guess. Yeah, because then they think you're a bear. But I think they make them in camouflage. Mine's camouflage. <laughs> I had camouflage one. <laughs> you do have a camouflage one. Apparently you can but stealth that's bee heat. they can sing through, so. I mean, who thought that the, the need, where are you keeping your hives that a camouflaged veil and like bee suit is a necessity? Like, what kind of gorilla beekeeping are we doing here? <laughs> oh, okay. I have gloves that work. So, as promised, we're back with styrofoam and to tell you guys what we're going to do about this queen and if you're a hobbyist and you have a hive that looks just like ours that all of a sudden shrunk is and is becoming super weak i'm going to give you some ways of what you can do to your hive to make them a little bit stronger and hopefully make it through the winter Or are they dying? They're probably dying for why they're outside the hive. Lighter. Oh, yeah, I do. Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> because I be lit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, and this is the kind of foam that I like to use. And now this is not as thick as I normally like it. This is only half an inch. I prefer it to be at least an inch thickness, just so that the R value goes up, meaning that it's able to have higher temperatures and insulate a little bit better so that, that the cold temperatures don't clash with the hot on the inside. Um, but the reason why I like foam way more than any other way of doing overwintering is because it completely wicks away. Well, I don't, I don't think it wicks, does it? It just cancels out. I've any never of the... used it. Never used it before. Yeah, I know. Casey does mountain camp method, um, which works great because it also like soaks up all the moisture too. And at the same time, you're feeding your bees. So kill two birds with one stone. Yes, but we're also learning how to beekeep with each other. So the things she likes, I'm learning about, and the things I like, she's learning about. So we're just kind of... We've learned compromise. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're coalescing into a new type of beekeeper together. Yeah, yeah, no, we 100% are. Um, but those are our two favorite ways of overwintering versus using like a quilt box or uh wood chips because it keeps all the moisture in the hive and i'm just not a fan of that i know they say if you put an upper entrance in then it's supposed to then get the moisture out but that's a lot of work when you could just get a piece of foam or put some sugar on your hive you know <laughs> but okay um so we'll just start here and start stacking it on before we get to that one back there ah. It was 60 degrees today. So they're going to be happy. Not as much moisture in here either. Well, a little bit. Yeah. See, they were drying it out. Let's just do it this side. Well, I wonder if they... Let's see the lid real quick. Well, actually, let's do this. That's fine. Yeah, no. I wonder if... See, they, they were pushing it away from there. Like, right here is dry. Yeah, that's and where the wet. cluster was. I guarantee it's what they're making with their own breath. Does it smell like anything? It has a taste. It almost kind of tastes sweet. Breath. Well, 
Or they could just be pulling out, because we didn't go through it, they could just be pulling out moisture and some nectar they have. Yeah, but that also kind of goes with the hypothesis that they were sort of just... They were learning how to move it about, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I forgot. Bricks? Yeah. It's okay, we'll find some. I'm gonna do something, because otherwise the wind's gonna blow these off. That's not gonna last day. I can drop bricks off tomorrow, we've been training. See. They're not really top. Oh, they started to a little bit. They're not top-wising it as much. They, they might not have as much of that around. You said it's harder for them. Oh, there's going to be bees on top of that. You're going to have to... I'm probably going to scrape that out. Oh, that's an old cage from when we got these like, hives. You, mean, you notice how, like, even with this hive, there's now there's no moisture or whatever? Like, there's a little bit on the sides, but they pushed it away from themselves. Yeah. And, like... Okay, you're going to hate me, but I got to... It. Here, just tap it upside. Yeah, there you go. It's not gonna work either. Here, just tap them on the outside. Just put the thing on. You might have no, no, no. no. Like, just take this, set it down, put the thing on. Oh, you might have to scrape some. Yeah, I got their butts up because they're releasing pheromones. But also, they're very docile. They're, they're like, what are you doing? Yeah, they're not happy about it. I'm trying not to squish you guys. Calm down. Oh, now they're like, okay, we got the guard bees out. These are probably the nurse bees up here. And they're like, um, can somebody tell the real bees to come up here? Yeah, but that seems a bees right there. Like, No, that is. They're not hurting. I don't prefer to have them all the way up here. Well, this was top and bottom. They're, they're in both boxes. Yeah. And they started in those little apame hives that you saw me look into. These came from that. That's what they started the after. Little, the little uh, four. The defender hives. Yeah. And I'm not promoting them, but they are amazing. They're tr they're not. I don't know if they're worth the money, but they're I adore really them. I super adore them. Okay, what are you thinking about doing with this? I just smack it off in the front of the hive. And, um, they'll make their way in. Uh, set aside, man. I'm, we'll make sure we take it with. You don't take all of it off. I don't think you should set on it and see if it uh set it on it and see if it'll just set down. The Amish are building something back there in the clearing. Is it? Does it Yep, um, I'll bring bricks up tomorrow. Oh, and shout out. Sometimes the videos lag from what you see to what's actually happening. <laughs> oh, oh, look at that. Okay, guys. Do. Okay. And for the people that are like, hey, your guys' hive is going to collapse stick around and see but understand like i've had this same genetic line since i started like i've been working with them like i completely understand why people don't want to lose hives yeah i truly do because it's like starting over every time but like the joys of knowing that this is a fifth next year will be their sixth generation daughter that means a lot to me I mean, it shows the quality, too. And because I... Because beekeeping mission is not easy. <laughs> well, to be 100% fair, everybody keeps saying it. Um, never treated either. Never treated, yeah. These these guys have never been treated. They haven't seen a mite treatment all year. Or in the last... Well, yeah, or ever, six but... Six years you've been beekeeping. Because remember the first year, you are like, you want me to bring over and I'll treat all your hives? I was like, no. And you're like, but I got it. It's right there. And I'm yeah, like, no. And you're it. like, yeah. But it'll be so easy. And I'm like... No. <laughs> You're like, I'm good. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. But at that point, like, I don't, I don't keep, I don't keep bees like everybody else keeps bees. I'm an experimental brain. Like, I just, you guys tell me what I should do in the comments. I do the opposite. So that way I just see what happens. I know. And in all honesty, we didn't really get to do all the experiments that we wanted to do this year. 
Yeah. So, also part of that is learning to beekeeps together. <laughs> This so is, next this is year true. we're gonna definitely have like we still did experiments this year but next year we already have some plans on what we're going to be doing how we're going to push the bees like i said we put the experiment in experimental beekeeping mm -hmm. that coming from? Oh. i love how docile they are right now that's awesome so i would also like to take this moment to say um we love hearing what you guys have to say in the comments, but say them constructively. So that way, if we don't say something and you say it important, but it comes off crazy, people might not listen to it. But you guys have some great ideas in the comments. So like, we're not here to tell you guys we know everything, but you guys do come up with some great ideas. No, they do. Just try to make sure when you say it, like, or you type it out, think about it, and make sure that if somebody, a new, be new beekeeper is watching the video they might stumble across your comment and it could be the Ooh. comment that fixes everything so think about that when you comment this is all new comb too from this year but it's a different color do you it, notice that yeah it's they, because of the pumpkins and it's a different consistency like it's like like feel it it's different mm -hmm. hmm I don't know, it's just because it's like very new. Maybe that's why. Ooh. Calm down. I know I'm being they're, rough in your hive and you're not happy about it. They're not happy with me and I didn't do anything. <laughs> because you're the only one that doesn't have a suit on. <laughs> well. Yeah, but to be fair, I... Okay, so... Backstory on Ziploduce. She wasn't always the nicest hive, but when I got stung by her, it helped my joints. Like, I felt good. And where other hives, it hurt so bad. So I only kept her around because I like to get stung by her. So I'd, like, kick her in the winter and get her to sting me. Just because I couldn't go more than a couple days without being stung by her. Okay, tell us that we are not the only ones. But in the middle of winter, do you guys get cravings to get stung? Because I definitely do. I, it, It's a countdown to when I can get stung again. <laughs> we sound crazy. I know, but... <laughs> I feel like having hobbies that hurt make you better at them because they only sting me when i mess up yeah that is true they catch me lacking can I, is that a term <laughs> and then they sting me and half the time it's in the eyeball um the majority of the time it's in the freaking eyeball but i've been stung on literally head to toe I've, i'm at a thousand stings oh i guarantee i bet you are mister i don't wear a suit which I don't recommend, but to be fair, if you keep bees that you need a suit with, you'll have bees that you need a suit with. But at the same time, like I said, she was always kind of mean. She wasn't super mean, but... Like, oh, it... Yep. Yeah. I feel like it, uh... She's calmed down over the years. She likes to be worked now. Well, she also has gotten used to us, too. Yes, this is true. And she's gotten used to being worked. See, here's a... As weird as it sounds, like, um... So, like, I've gotten to know her genetic line so well that, like, when I talk about her daughters, I almost talk about her, too. So, like, I really do get why people don't want to lose their hives. communicating with the hive next to us and I know you were just in it so we're already riled up <laughs> they, I, they literally they could feel the vibrations I bet yeah no they can <clears throat> they could probably hear them yeah probably feel their vibrations speed up um, oh also all drones should be gone in your hives now I do not see any drones somebody once told me that really strong hives may keep drones alive through the, like a few drones alive through the winter but i don't know if that's true really do you guys know if there's any volition to that Ooh. they're all building some home though <laughs> they are
That's what's nice about these lids. This is how a lot of uh, migratory covers look. Um, Cause it's nice if you don't have foam, but if like, you want to add on like sugar or something, you already have this extra space. But also, when the hive is getting really big, now they have some place to start drawing comb before they try to swarm. Because it's once they have nothing to do that they're like, okay, well we're bored, we have nothing to do, let's just swarm. Um, so when they have this and then you pop your hive, you're like, oh shoot, they're already up here working the comb. That means they have nothing else to do. This is like the last bit that they have left. So usually that's like a sign that you need to get some like supers on and whatnot. But also I did notice we cleaned these out this year, but regardless, they still built up this comb. Mm. <laughs> we call them lid bees. Oh, the bees that come that stay up here. Yeah, no, it's like they segregate certain bees to stay up here. They're like, hey, you're going to go up to the lid and you're never going to leave the lid. <laughs> and the weird part is if you put them in another hive, they go back to the lid. Like they... Like, even if you put them in, like, a five frame. But, okay, I, like, look at this. This is, do you guys see the orange in it? Like, can you guys see that well? Like, so is it because of the pumpkins? Like, is this? I think so. Like, that? it even feels different. It's, like, crispy. Yeah. It's not as sticky. I don't know if you guys can see the color well, but. I know, it's getting kind of dark out. <laughs> But it is that time of year that the sun starts setting, so mm. this can be an on theme for Halloween, I guess you could say. Okay, I don't, I think those are fantastic hives. Oh no, these look great. I am really excited about these. Especially since this is our first time doing any sort of pollination. We're, uh, we get two more pallets out here next year. Yep. So they liked what happened with these, because we were allowed these four and these four. And then, um, they said they'd see how that worked. And if they liked them, they didn't bother anything Then we could put two more pallets out here next year. So we're going to put one over there and we're going to put one right there. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's the plan. All right. So last one is this hive that you guys saw was super, super small. Like the cluster is literally like this. Um, and they have a small little brood pattern. They have a queen. They have eggs. They have brood. They have a ton of honey. Um, but the question is, okay, what do we do with a hive that has a cluster that's only this small? Because the problem that I'm kind of seeing is how are they going to keep warm if the cluster is that small? They're going to be struggling all winter long because they're going to have to work twice as hard just to keep warm and generate the heat that they need to make in order to keep the brood warm. Um, so there's a couple different ways you can go about it if you do have a hive that is this week. Um, the first one being we could take out the frames of bees, the brood, and um, some honey for resources and put them in a nuke box, shake some bees from another hive into them so that they have more um, hands to work and help the queen start laying more eggs. That's option one. Then option two is we could take the queen out, the brood, the eggs, the resources, the bees, and we could just shake them all into another hive and pinch the queen. So we're killing the hive, but I guess we'd be kind of boosting the hive, even though it's like a tiny little like cluster. Um, what do you think, Casey? I personally think we uh, pop it open, look to see if it's alive. And then, if it is alive, we leave it there until it dies, and then we autopsy it. Yeah. Anybody want to do a hive autopsy? We could do that. It'll be suspenseful. Like, you guys, if it dies, we'll bring it inside, and we will just rip it all apart and see what happens. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That'll be great for winter time. But if it survives, what does that say about the queen? This is a good point. But for all we know, she could have had, there could have been a little die off. She was just waiting for her next round. We didn't really get too deep into her. So let's yeah, see what it is. Or she could have swarmed out because these highs were booming. Yeah. The flow. And then it was the pumpkins and then it was goldenrod right after that. And to be fair, I'm not, I don't really worry too much about the swarming when it comes to her line because like you can kind of 
get that out of them. Like you have swarmy queens and you start to just kind of make queens from- Oh no, I've noticed that. Um, because after we put, as long as that hive has had a new queen for the season, then they don't try to swarm and they'll get like crazy big and they'll like push their limits, but they still won't swarm. And as somebody who makes queens, can I say one thing? Make your own queens. Like yeah. if you have no other option, you have to buy a queen. That's fantastic. I get that. There's a lot of good be like queen breeders out there. But if you can get your hive into year two and then make some splits off her and then just do some experiments with her. And from the first, if you like your, your local queens, like the queens that you make, they're going to be the best. Like, Oh, definitely. Because I always noticed uh, before I actually last year when I tried to start making my own queens, I would buy queens, get them shipped. And I'd always notice like at least 50% of them, the quality was just trash. And I thought the other ones were just like, those were like good bees. But then when I had my very first queens that were, I bred myself, I was like, oh, so this is what beekeeping is supposed to be like. <laughs> it's, a, it's a game changer. Like, and oh, yeah. I get there's money to be made in selling queens and like, I fully get that. But you should set a goal eventually one day, queen sufficient by yourself. Mm -hmm. Like buy hives, do whatever, but you want to have a genetic line that you can queen requeen those hives with honestly that's the way beekeeping really kind of needs to go if we're gonna help save our bees and our genetics because it like you need bees for your area like you need bees that yes are varroa resistant that can like do like winters and stuff depending upon like where you're located but like regardless you need bees that know where the resources are in your area how to adapt to the different weather patterns in your area versus getting them shipped from like like i just saw on facebook that here in southeast michigan there was somebody asking for help with a hive that was literally in a tree it was just a beehive in a tree and i was like oh my gosh those must be southern bees because like in texas this would work but in michigan this will not work whatsoever <laughs> and i think it becomes a relationship like i know what these hives like I, I don't worry about them swarming because i've spent five years watching the ones that swarm get weeded out like yeah. And I get the swarming something you want in nature, naturally you would want to happen in nature, but to be fair, I've also never stopped any bees from swarming. If they swarm, they swarm. Yeah. And then I requeen from that. Mm -hmm. And then I just kind of seed the area. Because when I first started my um, the bee yard, the experiment yard, there was no bees in the area. Like you never saw a honeybee. And then I spent the first couple of years just letting swarms out and swarms out and swarms out. And now every spring before our bees are even flying, you just have them coming out of the trees. Hmm. So like- And that's how you curate the genetics in your area too. So I've been working on making that yard do it. Okay, we're losing light though. Oh yeah. So, okay, sorry guys, we, we, we talk to each other a lot. <laughs> yeah. And we should start talking. You can tell we're uh, bee obsessed. Okay, still very weak. Oh yeah, it's really dark. I didn't realize that. So, I'm just going to put this on just to give him a little bit of a buffer because, I mean, hey. And then we're just going to see what happens. If they die, they die. But if they survive, then, oh my gosh, we landed on a gold mine. <laughs> and then um, we need to get bricks out here tomorrow. Yes. Um, because, okay, so also I do just want to mention, the reason why... Because I've always said bees perform better in a in a smaller um, box. You you want them to have only enough space for like just a little bit more space than their actual cluster of bees actually are. Um, so my first reaction was like, okay, if we want to at least see what happens, we should probably get them in a nuke. But the reason that we're not doing that is one to break them out this time of year when I know it's like. 58 degrees right now but still that's really cold and they're gonna have to then get the cluster warm again and then also to put them in a box that they haven't been spending the last however many months like three or four months adapting to now they have to make a new plan it's going to cause more stress on them they're going to use more resources use more energy and just it's better off to just keep them where they are this time of year than to move them so yeah i guess we'll just see what happens yeah no i'm good with it <laughs> Because, like I said, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of the eight that are out here are absolutely phenomenal double boxes. Oh, yeah. So, I'll take one out of eight. Mm -hmm. And to be 100% fair, I also, like, I'm just saying, like, they were moving that 
they were moving the water around the last video because like it is completely dry in the center and they moved it all out to the edges no they definitely aren't i think it's so, coming from the cluster or from like some nectar or something like that i think that beekeeping has developed a type of panic attack they they people <laughs> open they that. open their hives <laughs> and they have a panic attack whether it's good or bad and i'm just like throw this at it throw this at it throw this at it spend a hundred dollars here a hundred dollars here and let's, let's just see if anything sticks and then oh my hive died Dang, I don't want to beekeep no more because I just spent all this money and all this effort and they still died. Can't give up though. See, it's not about <laughs> it's not about hitting a success point. It's about knowing that there isn't a point of failure. And as long as you remember that there isn't a point of failure, you'll always succeed. Because even if they die, you learn something. Yes. Like maybe you, yeah, exactly. And... So that, I was going to say something, but I forgot. <laughs> but no, that's, that's why we say, you know, tell us what you want to tell us in the comments. And we respect it. We read it. You guys come up with some amazing stuff. But we also like to start a dialogue in the comment section. So Yeah, exactly. Just keep commenting. Keep chatting. Mm -hmm. Let us know what we do right, what we do wrong. Yes. But just say it politely. Yes. <laughs> because we don't want to we don't want to be part of the toxic beekeeping community. Because yeah. there is one. Yes, and, there is one. And we're all learning and growing together, so be kind to each other and there's that one beekeeper i forget his name now he says uh i'm not telling you how to keep bees i'm telling you how i keep my bees and uh sh shout his name in the comment if you know his name but he's absolutely fin is it, is it the rooster guy it might be but anyways no. sorry guys we ramble a lot yeah. <laughs> well Thanks for following along today. Um, like I said, I'm so excited about these hives and I hope that your hives are doing absolutely great too. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Did you have something to say? No? Okay. Oh wait, do I get oh. to say, don't quit, be fit? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, because that's what I do. We do don't quit, be fit. And then I punch the camera and it goes black and they're like, it's like a bang, you I know? I thought you were gonna hit me. Oh my gosh. <laughs>